your neighbors are like the video of Mark on Facebook. <laughs> the guy rented it to you laughing his ass off. Good afternoon and welcome to the Center for the Arts at the University of Buffalo. At this time, we ask you to please silence all cell phones and any other electronic devices. Please note the nearest emergency exit. Keeping in mind the nearest exit may be behind you. In the event of an emergency, please listen to directions via this public address system. And now, please stand if you are able, keeping the aisles clear, and welcome the graduating class of 2023.
Welcome. Trustee Lewin, President Tripathi, the graduates, the candidates for degrees, the faculty, the staff and the parents, families and friends of the graduates and candidates are now assembled. Therefore, I officially declare the 177th annual commencement of the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences is now opened. Okay, it's ready to start the ceremonies. Please remove your hats and stand if you're able for the national anthem performed by Dacapella. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. So please be seated. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge our platform party. Uh, Eunice A. Lewin, member of the SUNY Board of Trustees and UB alumni. President Tripathi and members of the university's President's Cabinet and UB Council. Associate deans, faculty and staff, honored guests and speakers who are joining us this morning this, for the ceremony. It is now my pleasure to introduce the 15th president of the University at Buffalo, Satish, Satish K. Tripathi. Good afternoon and greetings. Welcome to the friends and family joining us for this joyous occasion. Like you, we take immense pride in your graduate and our entire class of 2023. With that, I would ask you guests, our guests and members of our UB community to join me in a round of applause for the graduates of the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences.
Congratulations. Graduates, all you have achieved over the course of your education and lessons learned, the personal and professional strides you have made, everything is reflected in the cap and gown you wear today. Since the Middle Ages, this regalia has been a symbol of intellect and authority. To further reflect on the tradition, the word commencement comes from the Latin inceptio, or beginning. If you think about it, there's something of a contradiction embedded in this centuries-old rite of passage. On one hand, you have earned the status of intellectual authority. On the other, you are at the beginning of a journey, a night, and some respect. So, which is it? Today, I humbly ask you to embody this duality by embracing the role of a lifelong learner, one who has amassed the knowledge to be considered an authority, but has the wisdom to appreciate there's much more to know and understand. Not only about your profession, but the world. So as you wear the vestments of intellectual authority from the distance past and prepare for a new beginning in our 21st century world, I have another question for you. What are you going to bring on this journey? I hope your packing list, your packing list includes a well-loved UB hoodie and you will continue to wear with pride. But I'm really talking about the intangibles, the things you carry in your head and heart, like your, your memories of UB, the friendship you have made, the expertise you have gained in some the intellectual authority we celebrate today. Above all, it is my greatest hope that as you commence through this life's journey, through this life journey, you carry with you UB's mission of excellence and impact. You have lived the UB's mission in your strong work ethic and your commitment to your discipline. You have demonstrated it in your compassionate engagement with your classmates and society at large. Now that you are on the brinks of graduating, I would argue that it is more important than ever that you carry this mission with you. With our mis mission in your heart, you will have the vision to see our shared humanity even in polarizing times. You will elevate the public discourse with reasoned, fact-based contributions and with respect for opposing viewpoints. In times of challenge and strife, you will not respond with reflexive panic or blame. Instead, you will work calmly, taking major risks towards sustainable solutions. With our mission as your guide, you will make your way through the world with your eyes trained not on the bottom line, but the greater good. Graduates, if we have done our job, your UB education has primed you for a life of service and purpose. Of course, you will encounter setbacks and experience the sting of disappointment. These are, after all, part of human condition. But I'm confident you have everything you need to face these obstacles with resilience and persistence. And so today, as you commence on your journey, pack wisely. And please accept my best wishes for the road ahead. Once again, congratulations to the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences, class of 2023. I am so proud to be with you here today and to congratulate our graduating medical students once again. 
As the physician leaders of tomorrow, our students are committed to achieve differences in people's lives, no matter what zip code they live in. It is our vision here at the Jacobs School to train researchers, providers, educators to impact tomorrow, to chart the course of health for tomorrow. As part of this, we feel that they've been trained to think forwardly and to embrace innovations to train the next generation um, of healthcare providers. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our honored speaker, Dr. Eric Rubin. He is a symbol of leadership and firsthand experience through COVID-19 pandemic, providing expedited identification and publications of critical studies, video presentations that informed all of us about all aspects of the disease. Dr. Rubin has served in the invaluable role of Editor-in-Chief at the New England Journal of Medicine since 2019, after serving as Associate Editor for several years. He is an expert in infectious disease and has conducted groundbreaking research in tuberculosis and helped countless patients in often neglected populations. A dynamic speaker, an esteemed physician scientist, and a respected leader throughout our country and internationally. He exemplifies determination, commitment, and excellence. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Rubin to inspire us today. Thank you, Dean Brashear. The first thing I wanted to say was that I am struck by something, the wisdom of your choice in coming to UB for medical school. Dr. Tripathi mentioned the, uh, the academic regalia and how it's an old medieval custom. One of the medieval customs, though, is that from now on, whenever you attend an academic event, you have to wear your academic regalia representing UB. And the UB robes are really nice. Think about it. You could have gone to a school that has brown robes. <laughs> um, so it's a considerable upgrade. I, I do want to upgrade a little bit. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and thank my hosts for the, uh, for the lovely uh, swag. Um, so before I offer congratulations, I, I just want to tell a story. My father, who never attended college, had very specific plans for me. He, he used to say, I don't care if you become a doctor, just as long as you go to medical school. <laughs> um, so uh, the first thing I'd like to do is congratulate the parents and the families of the graduates, because whatever you did seemed to have worked. And, and I also want to celebrate the spouses, partners, and children of the graduates. Uh, you've made a lot of sacrifices. You, of course, you now have your own personal doctors. <laughs> and of course, congratulations to our newest physicians. Um, your years of hard work are now over, and you get to reap the benefits. <laughs> OK, I'm lying. Um, you have a few more things in your future, like training and residency and fellowship, and, and I doubt that will be the end of your learning. In fact, every day in the hospital reminds me of how little I know. I'm constantly learning from my colleagues, from trainees, from students, and especially from patients. But it, it raises the question of what is it that's important to learn? The practice of medicine changes so rapidly that much of what you've learned in the last four years is likely to be of only historical value. I think of my great uncle Paul, um, who was not only the first member of my family to go to college, but went to medical school uh, during the Great Depression. When you think about it, um, it's incredible what he had to do. He did all kinds of things. He, he was a... Um, uh, during his long career, he was a ring doctor for wrestling matches. Uh, he worked as a public health doctor in West Virginia looking for contacts of patients with sexually transmitted diseases, something that got him run off with a shotgun a few times. Um, he did a radiology fellowship and ended up, most of his, at the end of his career, delivering babies in Boston. But when you think about what he learned in medical school, it's actually incredible. He went to school 10 years before there were antibiotics. 
Um, he used to point out the famous Norman Rockwell painting, which had a doctor sitting next to a sick child and said, this is exactly right. That's, what, that's all we could do is sit there and hope that the fever broke. Heart attacks at that time were a death sentence, and the miraculous cures for childhood leukemias were about 40 years away. So when I was in medical school, I used to think about Paul. I thought, wow, people weren't very bright back then. But, but that smugness was quickly wiped out. In fact, very quickly for me. I, I left medical school after the first couple of years to work in the lab, and I was very slow. So it took me six years to get back and, and be a third year medical student. I started on surgery, and the very first day on rounds, most of the patients were on a drug that I'd never heard of. Um, because while I was in school, not only had ciprofloxacin been approved, but it, had been, uh, it became one of the most commonly prescribed drugs, and I'd never heard of it. it looking back then, it, it seems a bit like the Dark Ages. This was only 30 years ago. When I was a fellow, when, our, when we had newly diagnosed HIV patients, the first thing we would do was refer them to a social worker to, do, to make their will. And the disease claimed many of my friends and my classmates. But now, in another medical miracle, HIV is really largely a chronic disease in those who can take their medications. My mother died just before graduation from medical school. Um, and she died in part from coronary artery disease that she got from radiotherapy she'd gotten when she was 30 years old for breast cancer. With the improved treatments for both breast cancer and for uh, heart disease, um, at this point, she might still be alive now. When I was a medical student, smoking was very common and the consequent heart disease, lung cancer, and that has fallen tremendously um, here in the Northeast. And so it's, things are much better. And, and nothing, of course, has changed more than technology. When I was a resident, we used to have to go find labs. You'd go down to the lab, look on a bulletin board and try to find your patient's name so you could find the results uh, for them because nothing was computerized. Um, unless you had a beeper, if you weren't near a landline, you were completely unreachable because cell phones were still uh, many years away. Um, and I was a kind of early adopter of technology, an early adopter of email and the internet. A and back then I thought, they're kind of fun, but there's like no, no one to write to and nothing to see on the internet. So I figured they'd never work out. So in, in other words, people weren't very bright back then either. So what's that mean today? In a few years, I hope, there'll be any number of new treatments for cancers, some of which might be the spectacular cures we've seen for leukemias. I hope that genetic therapies are available, not just for these obscure genetic diseases, but for more common diseases like hypercholesterolemia and, 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 and hypertension. Uh, and even though I'm a very poor prognosticator, as I just showed, um, I'm, I kind of guess that AI is going to be very important in almost every aspect of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So what this means is there's a lot that we know that we don't know, and probably even more that we don't know that we don't know. In other words, what we say today might certainly be wrong tomorrow. To my mind, understanding that actually helps you care for patients. It's okay to say to, to a patient that you don't know the answer, or to admit that while someone knows the answer, you don't. In fact, I think it gives patients some confidence to know that you're going to look something up or to ask a colleague to find out what, well, may not be the right answer, but is the best answer at the time. And, and to my mind, the ability to engage in this lifelong learning is one of the best aspects of becoming a doctor. So does that mean humility is going to make, be what it is that makes your mark in the world? Um, that's not the usual, usually the first thing when you think about great doctors, about their, how humble they are. Um, and, and in fact, many of the doctors who figured prominently in uh, history weren't really known as physicians at all. Uh, a lot of them made impacts outside of medicine. Did you know that four of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were physicians? Um, there were any number of uh, revolutionaries who were doctors, I mean, including people like Jean-Paul Marat, who was the intellectual leader of the French Revolution, uh, Ernesto Che Guevara, or the, the, uh, who fought in the Cuban Revolution, um, Sun Yat-sen, who was the first leader of the, uh, of the modern China and overthrew the Qing Dynasty, 
I mean, even now we have current world leaders who are physicians and are known as physicians, including, for example, the Prime Minister of Ireland, who during COVID reactivated his medical license so he could work in a clinic once a day because there was a need. Um, doctors have been famous athletes. Roger Bannister, who broke the four minute mile. Um, Debbie Thomas, the first black US champion figure skater who went on to become an orthopedic surgeon. Um, the literary world is full of doctors like Arthur Conan Doyle, who brought us Sherlock Holmes and of course, Dr. Watson. There have been major religious figures. Uh, Pope, Pope John the 21st was a doctor. Um, Maimonides, the great Jewish scholar was a doctor. Alexander Borodin, who was known as a Russian composer, actually was more proud of the fact that he was a physician, a really prominent um, in the history of organic synthesis, and founded the first medical school for women in Russia. The first African-American woman in space, Mae Jemison, was a Peace Corps phys before joining NASA, was a Peace Corps physician in Sierra Leone. And I should add that one of the most innovative uh, editors at the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, one of my predecessors, Jerry Kassira, is a graduate of UB. But doctors can have huge impacts just by being doctors. And I'd like to tell you about one person who, who is really amazing. Paul Farmer was an infectious disease physician at the same hospital where I work. But he was much more. As a medical student, he founded a clinic in rural Haiti, which is now a 300-bed teaching hospital. He pioneered a way to care for patients with TB and HIV that saved lives all over the world. He was an outspoken advocate for public health and changed how we care for all kinds of diseases in places as diverse as Siberia, Peru, Rwanda, Lesotho, and the Navajo Nation. And he was personally inspiring changing the lives of just about everyone he met, including me. People think about Paul as a public health leader, but I think that's wrong. When Paul was a doctor, when he saw a problem, he focused on that individual patient and their needs, and then set about thinking about how to fulfill their needs. So rather than being a doctor to populations, he was a doctor to individuals within that population. He had this incredible rapport with people he knew thousands of patients all over the world. When I met patients at an HIV sanatorium in Cuba with Paul, uh, they all greeted him like a long lost relative. And how often could he get to Cuba? And, and, and that actually was his real superpower, his kindness and his caring. He knew everyone in the hospital, from the cleaning staff to the garage attendant to the president. This was really brought home to me when I attended on the consult service for the very first time. I picked up the service from Paul and decided to round with him the day, the day before because he was about to leave that evening. He was going to fly to Peru to work. So I rounded. Rounds are very long because everyone has to talk to Paul. Um, but finally, he left for his flight. The next day while I was on rounds, my beeper went off with a call to an outside number. Back in those days before cell phones, that was really annoying and it took forever to finally connect. And it was Paul calling from Peru to ask me how I was doing. This is pretty impressive. It was not easy to make a uh, phone call internationally from rural Peru and then stay on the line forever waiting for me to come on. I was really impressed and I felt really great when I went to see the next patient who was a gentleman who had an infected prosthetic hip. I said, how are you doing? He said, pretty good. You know, Dr. Farmer just called to check up on me. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to continue to get better at preventing and treating diseases. Um, and maybe a lot of what we'll do is going to be replaced by ChatGPT. But I don't think we have to be Paul Farmer to make an impact on our patients. They give us the privilege of entering their lives when, at, when they're at their most vulnerable. And, and I hope that we have the humility to understand that we don't know everything and that we have the gifts of kindness and caring to give back to them. So congratulations again to my colleagues, the class of 2023. So I wanted to thank Dr. Rubin, and if he would join me back up at the podium. With the hat. With the hat, With of the hat. course, yes. Right. All right, so Dr. <laughs> Rubin, it's been a pleasure to have you here at UB. Uh, thank you for your words of wisdom. Thank you for your commitment to medical education, and we just hope that this is a small uh, memento of your time here. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you.
So now I'd like to, in honored to invite uh, Pamela Lajacado up to the podium to present this year's parents gift, parent council gift. Oh, my mistake. That's what happens when the book moves. It is my pleasure to introduce this year's class speaker. Please welcome Mr. Joseph Lesh. Before I start, I just want to give the class one final reminder. Please pick up your regalia from the bookstore. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bashir, for the introduction. Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Lesh and I have the privilege to be the class speaker this afternoon. It might surprise you to learn that the school actually had a difficult time finding a class speaker. First, of course, they asked the smartest student in the class but they said they didn't want to. They then asked the funniest student in the class and unfortunately they said no. Lastly, they asked the most charismatic student and they said no as well. Finally, the school asked me to be the class speaker, and I figured after saying no three times, I should just say yes. <laughs> that joke goes out to Dr. Silvestri, who told me my jokes needed some work. <laughs> all right, fortunately for you all, I was only given a few minutes to speak today. So I'd just like to highlight three things that I feel are very important. The first thing I'd like to talk about is support. The immense support that we have received from our loved ones. The road to becoming a physician is not an easy one. And I'm sure there were times when each of us felt very overwhelmed. Whether that was related to the COVID pandemic, social issues, financial barriers, or personal challenges. But with the unwavering support from our loved ones, we were able to push through those obstacles and reach this remarkable milestone. Something I'm very proud of is the support that we have given each other as classmates. Honestly, one of my first memories from medical school was just being so impressed with how willing everyone was to help each other. Whether it was sharing resources or study guides, making hundreds of flashcards for just a five question quiz, posting hilarious memes in the group me, simply put, we were always there for one another. This peer-to-peer -peer support continues to this very day. For example, my good friend and classmate, Joe Ortolani, helped me write this speech. He actually had asked me to wait to the very end to thank him, just in case it went terribly, but I didn't listen. <laughs> so thanks, Joe. So to all those that are here today, and those that are not, who in some way have supported us, our parents, guardians, family, friends, and loved ones, please know that we are so grateful for each and every one of you. We will always appreciate what you have done to help us achieve our dream. Give yourself a pat on the back because in my book, this is your accomplishment too. The second thing that I wanna talk about today is our shared experience throughout medical school. The last time I spoke to you all, we were just about to start our clinical rotations and needless to say, a lot has happened since then. Something that really stands out to me is how on each rotation, we were placed on a different team composed of new unfamiliar faces and often paired with a classmate who in some cases we hadn't even met yet. You could argue that one of the most important skills that we learned throughout clinicals is how to work well with others, even if it requires us to leave our comfort zone. On top of that, we learned many other invaluable lessons. During internal medicine, we learned how to stay focused during our five hour long rounds. In our surgery months, we learned the importance of compression stockings and how if you're not scrubbed in, don't even look at anything that's blue. And in cardiology, we learned how to confidently nod and say, yes, I do hear that heart murmur. <laughs> Lastly, I'm sure I'm not alone in saying this, but we learned that when a resident tells you to go home, you go home. During fourth year, I think we can all agree we continue to work just as hard as we did the first three years. <laughs> I mean, we basically had no downtime this past year. And from our Instagrams, it's clear that none of us took any time off or went on any vacations. 
I'm sure our family and friends here today can attest to that. All jokes aside, I believe that our shared experience throughout these past four years truly represents a special moment in time and space. Just take a second right now, class, to think about some of your favorite times during medical school. The movie nights, the coffee dates, the parties, the bills games, and maybe even occasionally going to the library to study. Going forward, we will cherish these memories, both the good and the bad, and carry them close to our hearts. And that transitions us into my last point, the future. Soon enough, many things are going to change, and in fact, some of the things have already changed. For example, we no longer receive those emails asking us if we have seen a missing package in the building, or if we have access to those random experimental cell lines we've never heard of. In all seriousness, many of us will be moving to a new place and continuing our training in a variety of fields. And I'm so excited for us. Despite all of this change, some things will stay the same. 15 years from now, we'll probably still be getting emails which club is cleaning the student lounge on Friday. <laughs> Lastly, when I envision the future, I am reminded of all of the decisions we have yet to make. In his book, Atal Gawande says, life is choices and they are relentless. No sooner have you made one choice than another is upon you. Recently, I've been thinking a lot about the butterfly effect or how each decision you make leads to a cascade of downstream effects. In this way, life is constantly diverging and it can be easy to stress about these life choices. However, I want you to think about all the decisions and forks in the road you faced along your path and remember that they have all led you to this very moment. In this way, life, in fact, has beautifully converged. So in future, be confident with your decision making and know that you will end up exactly where you're meant to be. So to conclude, one day in the not so distant future, unless of course you plan on doing three fellowships, someone will look at you and see an attending physician who actually knows what they're doing and is genuinely improving the lives of their patients. But what that person won't see is the road you took to get there, the challenges you faced, the people that supported you, and this wonderful shared experience through medicine. Put together, I truly believe that this journey has prepared us to be excellent doctors who will provide passionate care to those that need it. Thank you everyone and God bless. Thank you so much. Now it's my honor to invite Pamela Lejacano to the podium to present this year's Parents Council gift. That was great, I got to be introduced twice. <laughs> On behalf of the Parents Council, I would like to thank the Medical School Administration, faculty and staff for all their support. A special thanks to the Office of Student and Academic Affairs for their guidance and continuous commitment to the Parents Council. Dr. Brashear, on behalf of the parents of the graduates and the Parents Council, we would like to present this photograph of the graduating medical class of 2023 to the university to be hung on the walls of the medical school for many years to come. Congratulations to the new doctors, their parents, and family members. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to invite Dr. Robert Taylor to present the candidates of Doctor of Medicine and Doctor of Philosophy. <clears throat> Will the candidates for the dual degrees of Doctor in Medicine and Doctor of Philosophy please rise if able. President Tripathi, on behalf of the graduate faculty of the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences, I have the honor to present these candidates 
They have met all the graduate requirements of the university for the dual degree of Doctor of Medicine and Doctor of Philosophy. By the authority of the trustees and the chancellor of the State University of New York and the council and the faculty of the University at Buffalo, I now confer upon you the degrees of Doctor of Medicine and Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. Congratulations. Dr. Matthew J. McGuire. <laughs> Dr. Yu Hao Shi. Dr. Jiho Sun. Now I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Jessica Kulak to present the candidates of the Doctor of Medicine and Master of Public Health. Will the candidates for the dual degrees of Doctor of Medicine and Master of Public Health please rise if able. President Tripathi, on behalf of the graduate faculty of the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences and the School of Public Health and Health Professions, I have the honor to present these candidates. They have met all the graduate requirements of the university for the dual degree of Doctor of Medicine and Master of Public Health. By the authority of the trustees and the chancellor of the State University of New York and the council and the faculty, of the University at Buffalo, I now confer upon you the degrees of Doctor of Medicine and Master of Public Health with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. Congratulations. Dr. Cassidy Nicole Ambergy. Now I'd like to invite Dr. Phil Glick to present the candidates of the Doctor of Medicine and Masters of Business Administration. Will the candidates for the dual degree of Doctor of Medicine and Master in Business Administration please rise if able. President Tripathi, on behalf of the graduate faculty of the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences, and the School of Management, 
I have the honor to present you these candidates. They have met all the graduate requirements of the university for the dual degree of Doctor of Medicine and Master in Business Administration. By the authority of the trustees and the chancellor of the State University of New York and the council and the faculty of the University at Buffalo, I now confer upon you the degrees of Doctor of Medicine and Master of Business Administration with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. Congratulations. Dr. Kyle Wyatrowski. <laughs> Dr. Nilda Natasha Valenzuela. Dr. Tara Russell. Now I invite Dr. David Milling to present the candidates of Doctor of Medicine. Will the medical school class please rise and remain standing if able. President Tripathi, on behalf of the faculty of the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences, I have the honor to present these candidates. They have met all of the requirements of the university and are recommended to you for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. By the authority of the trustees and the chancellor of the State University of New York and the council and the faculty of the University at Buffalo, I now confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Medicine with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. Congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Danielle Elizabeth Reber. Dr. Austin Orion Ainsworth. <laughs> Dr. Matthew Akbar. Dr. Nina Alcacid. Yeah. 
Dr. Hani Aljabi Lopez. Dr. Mark Andrews. <laughs> Dr. Sarah Catherine Andrews. Dr. Alex Aponte. <laughs> Dr. Camille Taylor Applegate. Dr. Sarah Armstrong. Dr. A.J. Bander. Dr. John Baker. Dr. Austin Barrett. Dr. Jordan Andre Bauer. <laughs> Dr. Dimitri Bellis. Dr. Jeffrey Andrew Bocabo. <laughs> Dr. Keenan Alvarez Board. Dr. Gregory Thomas Brown. <laughs> Dr. Michael Jacob Custodio Calza. Dr. Ellie Comanzo. <laughs> Dr. Janviev Cannon. <laughs> Dr. Gabrielle Capone. Dr. Jesse Ann Caprino. <laughs> Dr. Madeline Carver.
Dr. Allison Marie Cash. Dr. Yvonne Elizabeth Sedios. Dr. Waylon Chan. Dr. Renee Chen. Dr. Ian Kevin Chrisman. <laughs> Dr. Aaron Elizabeth Clow. Dr. Megan Murphy Cloutier. <laughs> Dr. Kelly A. Connolly. Dr. Chelsea Corinaldi. <laughs> Dr. Anna Aaron Davis. Dr. Divya Day. <laughs> Dr. Lillian Jane Dixon. Dr. Patrick Francis Durkin. <laughs> Dr. Fatima Alabas. Dr. Sofia Espinoza Marzita. <laughs> Dr. Nicole Marie Favor. Dr. Jamie Charles Floss. <laughs> Dr. Sarah Fortna. <laughs> Dr. Thomas Fretz.
Dr. Andre Galper. Dr. James J. Goshen. Dr. Eliana Markella Giancopoulos. Dr. Sean Alexander Gibson. Dr. Austin Scott Goldsampt. Dr. Taylor Goldman. Dr. Nicholas Graffio. Dr. Daniel Joseph Greenberg. Dr. Connor James Gust. Dr. Paul Hart. Dr. Finn L. Hennig. Dr. Michael Joseph Hyden. Dr. James Wesley Hill. Dr. Alex Michael Hollenberg. Dr. Christine Marie Hook.
Dr. Adam Xavier Howard. Dr. Din Hoja. Dr. Jian Chao Huang. Dr. Gary James Yakabuchi. <laughs> Dr. Mohammed Ismail. Dr. Alina Jaffrey. <laughs> Dr. Tanya Verma Jimerson. Dr. Colin Johnson. <laughs> Dr. Elaine Jonas. Dr. Chathia Joshi. Dr. Donna Capeller-Lieberman. <laughs> Dr. Dilpreet Kaur Spencer. Dr. Kristen Marie Kelly. <laughs> Dr. Ariel Joy Kent. Dr. Joanna Kipperman. <laughs> Dr. Alexander Kovacs. Dr. Lorna Elizabeth Crable. <laughs> Dr. Katerina Gabrielle Krajasek. Dr. Timothy Paul Kung. Dr. Mark John Loria.
Dr. Michaela Marie Loria. Dr. Victoria Kirilov Lazarov. <laughs> Dr. Rebecca Sarong Lee. Dr. Julia Diane Liberto. Dr. James Limanta. Dr. Catherine Grace Lindemann. Dr. Joseph Jude Lesh. Dr. Keith Shen Lo. Dr. Caroline Lajacano. Dr. Regina Lopez Merrill. Dr. Tyler Mack. Dr. Quinn Majera. Dr. Walid Suleiman Malik. Dr. Ainsley Catherine Mann. Dr. Mark Anthony Marcello. <laughs> Dr. Brandon Mariotti. Dr. Aaron Andrew Matulovich. <laughs> Dr. Kelsey Marie McIntyre. Dr. Andrew Philip Monty.
Dr. Bree Mucci Jackson. Dr. Christian Francis Mueller. Dr. Heidi Ann Mueller. Dr. Ayman Mustafa. <laughs> Dr. Joseph Hyungjun Na. Dr. Joseph Nathanson. <laughs> Dr. Renee Nelson. Dr. Jenna Neumeyer. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Jocelyn Nevue. <laughs> Dr. Stephanie May Newman. Dr. Kevin Nickerson. <laughs> Dr. Andrea Nawaka. Dr. Mary Margaret O'Hare. <laughs> Dr. Adetayo Oladela Ajusa. Dr. Hola Toyosi Holafui. <laughs> Dr. Dalapo Olawumi. Dr. Connor Orico. <laughs> Dr. Joseph Quinn Ortolani. Dr. Karen Sophia Park. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Grant Alexander Pirelli. Dr. Blake Allen Peterson. Dr. Noah Matthew Petty. Dr. Daniel Oluwabe Maleki Papula. <laughs> Dr. Christina Powers. Dr. Jan Jonathan Racky. <laughs> Dr. Brielle Rain. Dr. Hamza Razak. <laughs> Dr. Connor Reddy. Dr. Taylor Riley. <laughs> Dr. Michael Romano. Dr. Siobhan Ashley Rueda. <laughs> Dr. Margot Marie Rue. Dr. Daniel Salib. <laughs> Dr. Sharon Santosh. Dr. Alexander Schaefer. Okay. 
Dr. Brandon Shiro. Dr. Andrew Schwartz. <laughs> Dr. Sharice Simpson. Dr. Alicia Skaronsky. <laughs> Dr. Joshua James Slowinski. Dr. Jenna Brianne Smeeds. <laughs> Dr. Lauren Smith. Dr. Charlotte Starling. <laughs> Dr. John Stocking. Dr. Christopher Sullivan. Dr. Megan Elizabeth Sullivan. Dr. Isaac Schwartzman. Dr. Sandra Tambi Jarba. <laughs> Dr. Joshua Taubman. Dr. Grace Margaret Tomzak. <laughs> Dr. Henry James Towery. Dr. Aisha Towns. <laughs> Dr. Douglas Chahay.
Dr. Joshua Uffer. Dr. Janet Umenta. Dr. Brian Unruh. Dr. Courtney Vaughn. Dr. Nina Victoria Vasquez. Dr. Nat Vos. Dr. Audrey Wagner. Dr. Kristen White. <laughs> Dr. Alex Leah Wodowski. Dr. Song Yao. Dr. Jian Yoon. Dr. Brian Yu. <laughs> Dr. Ash Zowerton. Dr. Jeff Zhang. <laughs> Dr. Erica Jung. Hey, congratulations to the class of 
So we have, <laughs> we have two more important, important oaths to take. So now I'm going to ask my colleague, Dr. David Milling, to recite the charge of Maimonides. Milling? Thank you, Dr. Brashear. Uh, I will invite my new colleagues to follow along with me on page 22. Uh, I'll recite, you can just follow. May the almighty source of mercy be with you in all your efforts to heal the sick. May you be filled with love for your art and for mankind. May the thirst for gain and desire for fame be far from your heart, for these are the enemies of pity and the ministers of hate. May your strength be preserved that you may be able to restore the strength to the rich and the poor, the good and the bad, the friend and the foe. May you see in the sufferer the human alone. When those wiser teach you May you be humble to learn, for the human mind is so limited and the art of healing is so vast. May there never arise in you the notion that you know enough, but may you always have strength, leisure, and zeal to enlarge your knowledge. Your work is great and the mind of mankind presses forward forever. You have been chosen to watch over the life and death of the creatures of the Most High. And from the Most High will come the guidance and strength that shall make this immense work of avail. Thank you, Dr. Milling. And at this time, all the graduates join me in reciting the oath found on page 23 of your program. Everybody ready? I swear to fulfill to the best of my ability this covenant. I will respect those positions, scientists who step by walk, gladly share such knowledge as mine with those to follow. I will remember science to medicine. I will pursue the expansion of my knowledge throughout my life for the benefit of my patients. I will practice medicine with the conscience and dignity. I will respect the privacy of my patients and not judge them. I will present disease when I can, and prevention is preferable to cure. Most tread with care in matters of life and death. If it be merely the suffering at the end of life, I face this awesome responsibility for future this my own prayer. I project to preserve the finest traditions of my calling. May I experience Thank you. That was beautiful. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Lori Luzzi, who's the, of the class of 1988. She's the president of the UB Medical Alumni Association. She's going to give her remarks. And I'm also reminded that Dr. Silvestri is a graduate of 1988. Thank you, Dean Brashear. Um, as the dean said, I am Lori Luzzi, class of 88, and the current president of the Alumni Association. And I am so happy to welcome all of you to the network of 280,000 alumni that are located across these United States. So wherever you are, there will always be a UB contact nearby, most of which will probably be Bills fans, so you can all talk proud together. I have, had, I have the pleasure of serving on both the uh, admissions committee and the alumni association. So I see how the process works from soup to nuts, or in this case, applicant to alumni. 
and I have two things I'd like you to think about moving forward. First, as applicants, the majority of you wrote about how you wanted to help people and give back. Uh, it, it was in your personal statements, your volunteer activities, and you spoke about it in your interviews. And we believe you, but we also know how life can get complicated. So I want you to remember to help others and give back. It does not have to be in monetary ways. It can be in volunteering, small gestures, a simple touch, or taking the extra time with a patient just to listen, even though you have a whole list of things that need to get done. You cannot measure the impact these small acts of kindness may have on another person's life. So don't forget why you want to be here and pay it forward by helping others and giving back. The second thing is as alumni, which you all are now, is to stay connected. Hopefully in your time here, you have made lifelong friends. You have met faculty and attendings that have influenced you and participated in organizations and groups that'll keep you connected to each other and the school. Even if your time here wasn't all you dreamed it would be, I still hope that there have been meaningful moments that you're proud of and can share the struggles with us so that we can continue to update our school to make it an even better place. No matter how you slice it, the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences has given all of you a platform for which to jump off into the next phase of your career. So, before you delete the emails we send or toss out the postcards we mail, please take a moment to remember the Jacobs School and stay connected. We believe in every one of you and hope in turn you will believe in the school that gave you this opportunity. So, in summary, the two things, one, help others and give back, Two, stay connected with each other and the school. With that, I want to tell all of you how proud we are of you. And, but before we get into the congratulations, I want you to take a moment and look around. It took a lot of support from family, friends, and faculty to help you reach this goal. I think it would be nice for you to take this opportunity to thank them. From this day forward, you have earned the honor of being addressed as doctor. It comes with great responsibility. Never take it for granted and work every day at being the best doctor you can be. So it's finally time to say congratulations to the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences class of 2023. So may everyone please rise if you're able for the singing of the alma mater, performed by Da Capello, the class of 2023. The lyrics uh, can be found on 25 of your program. Spirit, heart. 
heart and mind. Together we'll continue life's journey. Oh, mid your buffalo forever be. To buffalo, all hail to thee. Noble and strong is our university. To blue and white, pledge loyalty. Singing, I will always remember thee. Singing, I will always remember thee. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. And what a wonderful way to end the celebration. Now I invite Dr. Suzanne Lechuk, our Grand Marshal, to close the ceremony. I declare that the 177th Annual Commencement Exercises of the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences are now concluded. Thank you.